Hello to everyone. Welcome to uh, Microsoft Dynamics AX4 Trade and Logistic Remote Training Day 3. I am Otronia Biga from Curious UK LTD. My experience is productive six years. Specialization uh, Financial Management, Trade and Logistics, Projects, Human Resource Management. Here you see my email. Uh, things you need to, uh, you need to know. Um, you need to read your manual uh, to do your exercise, and I await your questions uh, before Friday, before tomorrow, 12 p.m. Um, now, just the time, Zona is GMC. You see my email. And now, agenda day 33. We will cover those chapters chapter 7, over and the delivery and miscellaneous charges, chapter 8, quarantine management. Chapter 9, Inventory, Reporting, and Statistics. Chapter 7, we have those objectives, set up uh, the accounts receivable and accounts payable modules to accept over and under delivery, set up acceptable over and under delivery percentage to an item, manage over and under delivery in sales and purchase order processing, add price miscellaneous charges to an item uh, dependently and independently of the item quantity, set up miscellaneous charges code, set up miscellaneous charges group for customers, vendors, and items, and assign a miscellaneous group to customers, vendors, items, and orders. Set up miscellaneous charges manually and automatically. Modify or delete the automatic miscellaneous charges. Explain how land costs are managed. Variability in a, uh, in a company's internal and supply performance can cause significant back order administration manage even small differences in quantities, orders, and receipts. The over-delivery and under-delivery uh, functionality in Microsoft Dynamics AX form can be used where the received or delivered quantity of an item uh, fluctuates occasionally, and um, it is not significant enough to be managed as a uh, back order. Uh, so you can use over and the delivery to avoid a necessary back order handling every time an order is slightly over or under delivered. Uh, the setup uh, of an item to access over and under delivery is a two-step process. So first of all, um, you have to set up the account receivable and account payable parameters to accept over under delivery and then set up each item by defining the acceptable tolerance percentage for over under delivery. So parameters and items. Now we see accounts receivable parameters. The first step in the setup of over under delivery consists of setting the appropriate parameter for both account receivable and account Payable module. You can find those parameters the same um, options: accept over delivery and accept under delivery. <coughs> so, in the picture you see in square on those two options. And now, talk about accept over delivery options. Is it, if uh, this option is selected, more items can be received. Uh, through the parking slip or invoice update when the quantity ordered in the purchase line. Uh, now talk about the uh, second option, accept under delivery. If uh, this option is selected, uh, few items can be received through the parking slip or invoice update when the quantity ordered in the purchase line. If neither accepts uh, over delivery, now accept under delivery are selected. 
when purchase and sales orders cannot be closed until the precise uh, quantity order is received or delivered. This keeps um, demand on the system for those back orders that still have to be fulfilled. Now talk about item table. The item table. The next step in the setup is to define the acceptable tolerance for over and under delivery for each item. This is expressed as a percent instead uh, of a quantity so that it can be scalable with every order. So you define not quantity but percent value. Uh, you see purchase order field group and sales order field group. You see two, uh, two squares. So, um, you define percent in all the delivery fields for purchase order and for sales order and in the fields under delivery for purchase and sales order. So uh, you define percent value. Now uh, let me show the exercise 7.1. I go to my Microsoft Dynamics CX4. We have uh, exercise. Now I'm going. To oh, that is my. Okay, here we are. Now I am going to set up um, my account receivable and payable model for over and under delivery. Process. I open a countable module on the folder setup. I open the form parameters. On the tab update, I verify that my options accept over delivery and accept under delivery are active. I verify for account payable model as well. So under setup I open parameters, the form parameters and on the tab update I verify that my options accept under delivery and over delivery are Active. I close my forms. Now uh, go. Now I'm going to set um, my over delivery tolerance for item. Open inventory management module. Then open uh, the form item. I locate item. BR14 and on the tab reference I define over purchase order 5% over delivery and on the delivery over purchase order 5% as well. So I define for sales order over delivery 5% and under delivery. Now I did two steps per, per second. Now, verify, uh, now I'm going to verify how those, uh, how these options work. I'm going to create purchase order, so open the uh, account payable module, the form purchase order, create a new purchase order and create a line. I already have this purchase order. My vendor, my line. On the line, I enter 1000 quantity. And I'm going to receive 1007. Click button posting and packing slip. I already posted my packing slip. Now I'm going to show you my. Parking slip quantity on 
the tax line, you see ordered quantity and received quantity. So uh, when I set up uh, my um, my over on the delivery tolerance in percent, system allows me to post packing slip with over delivery. Now I go back to my presentation file. Now talk about uh, miscellaneous charges. Uh, miscellaneous charges are um, uh, cost and fees. Uh, that can be added to the cost of items, sales, and purchase according to the success. So, in general, in general, miscellaneous charges are uh, additional costs added to sales and purchase, such as freight, transport, postage, insurance, packing, and uh, fees. It's in, uh, the miscellaneous charges capabilities in Microsoft Dynamics AX form allows for companies to eliminate data in try by assigning charges to items, to items, customers, and vendors when charges frequently occur or are um, required. So, There are three ways of adding miscellaneous charges. Price miscellaneous charges. Uh, this is a fixed uh, charge set up for a uh, specific item. For example, a um, uh, startup fee that is charged at the time that the item is traded. The price miscellaneous charge is set up on the item form. Uh, next, next way is manual setup. Uh, this kind of charge is um, manually added to the order header on order line of a sales or purchase order. For example, on one time fee that is charged to the low order or specific line on an order. Uh, next way is automatic setup. So this charge is set to automatically um, add miscellaneous charges when a purchase or sales order is created. This charge is set up in the account receivable or account stable module under set up miscellaneous charges. And uh, the charge uh, can be added to a specific item, an item miscellaneous charge group, um, a specific customer or vendor, a customer or vendor miscellaneous charge group, or items, customers or vendors, or combinations of them and both. Now talk about um, the first way, price miscellaneous charge. A price miscellaneous charge is uh, an, an amount that is added to the price of an item. A miscellaneous charge minus the production and setup cost, fees, or freight. So price miscellaneous charge can be set up um, independently or dependent on the quantity of items three. We have two, uh, two stations. Independent of the quantity of the items, the miscellaneous charge is a fixed amount that is added to the order price, independently of the item quantity. The return of 20 items are bought, the miscellaneous charges on the order are the same. And um, a second situation dependent on the quantity of items. The miscellaneous charge is calculated based on the item quantity and added to the order. So you can see in picture item table. And um, you can see purchase order field group. And you can see a field price miscellaneous charges and price quantity. And the same field you can see in the cost field group and in the sales order field group as well. Uh, 
Now let me show exercise 7.3. Now I go to my Dynamics AX form. I close my window and let's put the window. Now I'm going to create price uh, price miscellaneous charges. Uh, open I open inventory management module and I open the form items. I locate my item C O L three thousand and one hundred. On the tab price discount. I define the uh, price with the line of charges. So now I am going to define for purchase order. In the field price with the line of charge, I field 100, price quantity 25. And I activate it included in the unit price option. You see last date of price. Okay, now I go I go to purchase order and verify if my price is still in as charges work. Open account payable model, the form purchase order. I have already my purchase order. My vendor line item C O L three thousand and one hundred quantity twenty five. And you see that the system updates the net amount 100. So system updates this amount uh, from item table. Now I go and verify how my price miscellaneous charge works in sales order. Uh, open account receivable module, sales order, the form sales order. I have already my sales order, this one. I created a sales order and created a line. Enter quantity two. And you see that system updates amount in the field net amount. And this field system, uh, I go to main item table, and I'll let me show on the tab price discount. My price is Solana charge for the sales order. I go back to my presentation file. Selena charge code. To have manual and automatic miscellaneous charges allocated when a sale or purchase order is created, miscellaneous charges code must be set up. So you need miscellaneous charges code if you are going to have um, to allocate manual or automatic miscellaneous charges. Use miscellaneous charges code to specify the type of charges and how the charge is debited and credited. The miscellaneous charges code uh, are set up in both account receivable and account stable modules um, under folder setup under folder miscellaneous charges in the form miscellaneous charges code. So you can see two tabs, overview and posting. In 
in the overview tab, uh, you define unique codes so from the Selenium charges code in the description, and you can define item sales group if it is necessary. Uh, you can define that this miscellaneous charge code is excluded in the interest set functionality. And as additionally, you can define language text and external code. Uh, next tab is posting. In this tab, you define uh, posting rules. So you can see some fields in the uh, debit field group and credit field group. Um, in the field type, uh, we have three options. Item, item, ledger account, and uh, customer or vendor. So type uh, determines who or what carries the charge. The options are as follows. Uh, as I say, item, ledger, and customer vendor. So if, uh, if I select type item, If I select item, system uh, will include miscellaneous charge in item cost, and um, system will increase. System increases item price, item received price on the charge amount. If I select ledger account, the charge is incurred internally. If I select customer or vendor, the customer or vendor incurs the charge. And so remember that when your debit type is item, system, um, system increase item received price. And uh, credit, credit types are the same. So item, ledger account, and customer or vendor. Usually, uh, usually in the credit type field, uh, users uh, select ledger account or customer or vendor. If you select ledger account, if you select debit type item and credit type customer vendor, system generates a miscellaneous charge amount directly to creditor and increases item uh, receive price. If you select uh, credit type customer vendor, uh, you don't need um, you don't need posting type or any ledger account. So let me show the next picture. This is the best practice about miscellaneous charge sales and purchase. So, um, best practice miscellaneous charge sales. Customer incurs charges. Charges are incurred internally. Debit credit type item is not used in this account receivable model. System uh, doesn't allow uh, to increase or decrease issue price and this miscellaneous charge charges amount. So if you can only um, post miscellaneous charges as customer incurs uh, charges or, um, or you can uh, or charges can be incurred internally. Best practice uh, miscellaneous charges purchase. Item incurs charge so in this way, our uh, system, uh, system increase or decrease item at received price. Charges are incurred internally. Vendors incur charges. 
that the five item is used when the cost is allocated to the cost type of the item in the account payable model. Credit type item is not used in the account payable model. Okay, now let me show exercise 7 form. I open my Dynamics X form. Now I'm going to create a miscellaneous charge code. I open account table module and the folder setup. Uh, open the folder miscellaneous charges and miscellaneous charge code form. I already created miscellaneous charges code transport, description transportation fee. On the tab posting, I define debit type and credit type. So now, System, the system will generate uh, directly to creditor my miscellaneous charges as credit type and will increase my item uh, receipt price. I close the form. I go back to my presentation file. Manual setup of miscellaneous charges. As soon as sales or purchase order has been created, miscellaneous charges can be added to the order header and all the order lines. Miscellaneous charges are typically added manually to a sales or purchase order when the charges apply only to the specific order. Uh, so for sales orders, miscellaneous charges can be manually added to the sales order header and lines and both the sales order header and lines. For purchase order, miscellaneous charges can be manually added to the port of the purchase order header and allocated to the line. The purchase order lines are both on the header and the lines as well. Uh, so let me show the exercise 76. Now I open my dynamics here. Form. Now I'm going to add my miscellaneous charges to sales order. Open account receivable module, sales order, the form sales order. I have already my sales order. This is my line. In the header, in the header of a sales order, click button setup and select menu line miscellaneous charges. So you can create uh, a new line as miscellaneous charge. System update transaction text category miscellaneous charge value. And some miscellaneous charge value. For example, the chart. Now I'm going to delete. On the second line, click select second line, select uh, click button setup and miscellaneous charge. 
So I simply can add miscellaneous charge for line as well. And now to verify uh, the, the, the total of miscellaneous charge. In the header, click button inquiry and total. You can see total miscellaneous charges. 175. Close your form. Now I'm going to add miscellaneous charge in the purchase order. I open account payable module, the form purchase order. I already have my purchase order. This is my vendor, my line. In the purchase order header, click the button setup and miscellaneous charges. So I already have my miscellaneous charges. After that, I need to allocate miscellaneous charges in the purchase order. So click setup and allocation. You can see some options you can allocate for net amount for line quantity or per line. I select net amount. You can allocate uh, your miscellaneous charges for all lines, or positive or negative. Negative, it will be external. Now I select all. You can allocate all or you can allocate only for received quantity. And click OK. After that, you can review your allocated miscellaneous charges on the line, locate the line, click button setup, and miscellaneous charges. You see your allocated miscellaneous charges. So in this way, you can add manual miscellaneous charges in the sales and purchase order. Then um, purchase and sales order are open. You have no uh, when uh, you have no up, uh, updated invoice updated uh, for the sales of purchase order. I go back to my presentation file. Here's the um, Solanus Charges Group. Microsoft Dynamics DX form can be set up to have miscellaneous charges added automatically when an item is purchased or sold. Before setting up and assigning automatic miscellaneous charges, miscellaneous charges groups must be created and set up. So there are three miscellaneous charges groups. Customer miscellaneous charges group, vendor miscellaneous charges group, and item miscellaneous charges group. So these groups are defined in the auto miscellaneous charges form and then assigned to customers, vendors, items, or sales and purchase orders. Miscellaneous charges group are usual in situation, uh, situations such as um, when a company has charges that apply to certain customers or groups of customers, then vendors uh, charge certain fees on all orders. Uh, then uh, the one or more items are associated with one or more customers or vendors. The automatic miscellaneous charges can be specified, as you see, for customer accounts, for, for a group of customers, or all customers, and as well for a specific vendor account, a group of vendors, or all vendors, for specific items, 
a group of items on for all items and a combination of the above selenite charges can, uh, for example, be allocated in the station where specific customer uh, buys a specific item. Automatic, um, automatic selenite charges codes are set up for sales in the countable model and for purchase in the account payable model. For both setup areas, uh, select setup miscellaneous charges, auto miscellaneous charges, and uh, open the form auto miscellaneous charges. And you, you see the parameters, in this picture you see parameters, and they are available on the overview tab on the auto miscellaneous charges form. And there are two levels on which parameters are specified, main and line. You see in the uh, second column those levels. Main, if selected main, the settings are applied only to all items, which means the term item code field is set all, and this cannot be changed. Uh, level line, if selected uh, this level, the item or item group that the setting supplies to must be specified. So uh, you can see account code. This account uh, code specifies whether the charge is to be calculated for a specific account table or specific account group or for all accounts. Customer vendor relation is a value in the account code field is set to table. The, in this table, you can specify the account number for which the charge has been created. If group is selected, specify the charge group for which the charge has been created. Uh, next, item code. <coughs> If you have a level name, this field by default is set to all. If you have a level line, you can specify whether the charge is to be calculated for a specific item or specific item group. And item relation, if uh, you have a level name, this field by default is blank. If you have a level line, um, this field uh, and uh, in the field account code uh, field is set to table, specify that in this field you need to specify the item number for which the charge has been created and if the value group, specify the item miscellaneous charge group for which the charge has been created. Auto miscellaneous charge um, form has two tests. Um, now we talk about tab overview. Now we talk about tab lines. So in this tab, um, you can meet those fields: currency miscellaneous charge code, uh, category miscellaneous charge value, miscellaneous charge currency code, and sales tax group and keys. So uh, here uh, in the picture you see the description of those fields. Let me show how uh, automatic um, miscellaneous charges work in our system, in our dynamic state form. Now I go to my dynamic EX form. I'm going to show exercise 7.7. 7. I'm going to set up automatic charges and use those charges on sales order. So open account receivable module under folder setup. Select miscellaneous charges folder and auto miscellaneous charges. You see two levels, main and line. 
sleep level means create a new record in the account code uh, select table. Now I set up uh, for customer, for one customer, and for all items. On the tab line, I selected my currency, miscellaneous charge code, category, miscellaneous charge amount, and same currency. I don't need sales tax, so I will leave this field blank. I selected checkbox keep. Close the form. Now open the sales uh, the form sales order. I have already my sales order. System for me added my learner's charges. So you create sales order and create items. We set up relation between this customer and all items, so system added miscellaneous charges. Now I I'm going to review my invoice. I can review directly in sales order, click button inquire and select menu line invoice. I go directly from sales order to invoice journal. So first of all, I'm going to review my miscellaneous charge um, amount in the invoice document. In the invoice uh, channel form, click button show and select menu line original. I see my invoice document and on the bottom of document I see my miscellaneous charge system. System added for me miscellaneous charges. Close. I close the document. In the same invoice journal, I can review my miscellaneous charges. Click button miscellaneous charges. And you see code, transaction text, category, and amount. I go to General Ledger and now in the chart of account I locate my ledger account from, from miscellaneous charges. This one. Click button OK. Click button transactions. You can see this amount, this larger number. You can see that this miscellaneous charge is added. Click button original document. Order invoice, sales order. We can review sales order. On this sales order, in the same sales order, the same line. I close this form and you can review document. The same invoice general form, show original. Document. Same invoice document. Same miscellaneous charge. Now I go back to my presentation file. Land, uh, land cost miscellaneous charges. Land cost enables the company to capture um, all the costs related to an inventory item. Calculating land cost is uh, valuable when the additional costs are a significant part of the item cost. Determining um, land cost is uh, also helpful 
then uh, you compare item cost between vendors, for example, vendor A, so an item from four and seventy-five dollars, and vendor B, B sells the item from uh, four and twenty-five dollars. However, vendor B charges more than three charges, so that, um, the complete cost of the item is more than vendor A cost. Uh, third party charges such as freight and import duty can be posted to an item so that the item transaction includes these charges. This provides a landed cost for the item. This, uh, these additional charges can be added on the purchase order, before the order is posted, and after the order is posted using the invoice journal. So let me show the exercise um, 7 8. I'm going back to my Dynamics AX form. I close all unnecessary windows. Now I'm going to add my land cost after invoice updating, after purchase invoice updating. Uh, so open account payable module and uh, follow the inquire, open journal and the form invoice. I locate uh, my necessary invoice L093 CSS and um, I need simply click in invoice journal uh, click button miscellaneous charge and select menu line adjustment so here you see Allocation method, um, net amount, quantity, and per line. I select net amount. This is posting date. Here you see allocate, uh, how you can allocate miscellaneous charge for all lines, for positive or negative. I select for all. Credit correction. Um, if you check this box, system reduce item receipt price, the receipt cost. If this checkbox is blank, system increase um, item receipt price. So I simply select insurance, miscellaneous charge value. And click button OK. Now uh, I will leave this button and verify. Click the same button in Selena Charges and select menu line in Selena Charges. Here I have my Selena Charges. I go back to my presentation file. Uh, so we covered it over under delivery, over under delivery setup, over under delivery transaction. The miscellaneous charge section covered it in the following. How additional costs are added to sales and purchase, such as, such as freight, transport, postage, insurance, packaging, and fees? Uh, ways to help eliminate data and try allocate charges to items, set up and use automatic miscellaneous charges, uh, and you see uh, in my picture that we covered miscellaneous charges. 
Pi to the linear charges to the linear charges code, manual setup, automatic setup, and land cost. Chapter 8 Quarantine Management. We have those objectives set up a warehouse for quarantine use, set up an item to be automatically quarantined by setting up the required parameters, create and process a manual quarantine order. In the quarantine order process, split, return, and square part of the order. Describe the quarantine process and the statuses of the quarantine order. Facilitate the manual or automatic quarantine of an item, you must create a warehouse to hold the quarantine item. Within Microsoft Dynamics CX4, there are two types of warehouse, default and quarantine. A quarantine warehouse is where items are kept, for example, to go um, through quality tests before they are released to the uh, regular warehouse for use. To use quarantine orders, you must create a quarantine warehouse and attach it to the regular or default warehouse. Uh, there are two groups attached to an item, to an item table, to an item form, that um, affect uh, how the item can use quarantine management. Uh, so and those two groups are inventory model group and dimension group. Inventory model group controls if an automatic quarantine order should be generated for the item. Controls uh, whether to allow for negative financial or physical inventory. Controls the ledger integration. Controls the uh, registration and ticking requirements and dimension group controls uh, the item storage dimension, how the item is stored and drawn from inventory. Uh, give me a second, I will check if we have some exercise. Okay, we have exercise 8.1, create quarantine inventory. Let me show this exercise. I go back to my Dynamics AX form. Close the form. So uh, first, our step is create a, where a current in a warehouse. Open inventory management module under folder setup. Go to inventory breakdown and open the form warehouse. I have already my warehouse. Quantum is warehouse, uh, so create a new record and select type quarantine. We have three types, default, quarantine, and transit. So now we create the type quarantine. And uh, from a uh, default warehouse EW, we assign quarantine, quarantine warehouse. 
now I'm going to create inventory module group in the same uh, inventory management module. Open folder setup, then inventory. Open the form inventory module group. Uh, create a new record. I have already this record, quarantine inventory group. On the tab setup, select option quarantine management. Now I'm going to assign inventory module group and warehouse to my item in the same inventory management module. Open the form item. I I am going to locate locate my item. Here they are. I have already my item and on the tab general I assign my um, inventory module group. And in the dimension group field, I assign dimension group as required in the exercise. Now, I'm going to create purchase order. Open the module account payable, the form purchase order. I have already my purchase order, this one. So uh, create a new purchase order, a new line, and update the purchase order, the parking slip. I already updated. Uh, this is my purchase order. This is my parking slip. You see, uh, in the lines, I selected the default warehouse and review transaction, invent inventory transaction. You can see quantity, receipt, uh, status receipt. I close the window. Now, uh, Go and review quarantine orders in the inventory management. Select periodic, then open the form quarantine orders. So you can see my item, quarantine order number, where uh, receipt warehouse, and quarantine warehouse. And you can see quantity and status status. Now I go back to my presentation file. To manage items to be uh, quarantined, Microsoft Dynamics X form follows a three-step procedure. Using the quarantine order form, transactions are created for the item because of the quarantine order. So uh, you can see three steps. Uh, an item is received through registration of parking slip updates in the standard inventory. A quarantine order is created either manually or automatically moving the item to the quarantine inventory warehouse and making the item available um, from the standard inventory. 
The quarantine order is uh, prostated in the quarantine order form, then recorded as finished, and then ended. This transfers the item back to the standard inventory. So, um, quarantine uh, management, it means that item are um, temporarily kept from the standard inventory transaction, from the um, movement and uh, sailing. Uh, here you can see four status, uh, status of um, quarantine order. Created, started, reported, as finished, and ended. Quarantine order gains a status created, then a manually created quarantine order in the form quarantine order. So you can manually you can manually create a record in the quarantine order form, and uh, this record will gain status created. Started. The item is now located in the quarantine warehouse. Automatically created quarantine orders are automatically given this status. So, in general, if, um, as I shown, uh, if you use a quarantine management uh, functionality, you create purchase order, and system automatically uh, locates this record in the quarantine uh, order form, and this record gains status started. Reported as finished. The start of quarantine order reported as finished. The item is reported for further processing via the warehouse management module and is awaiting transfer here. The item is still located in the quarantine warehouse. So you manually uh, change uh, status from started or created to reported as finished. And the item content is ended. The item is transferred to the standard inventory and released. You manually change the status from reported as finished to ended. So on the one uh, a record can gain on the one status automatically. The status is started. Manual quarantine of an item is performed by creating a new quarantine order uh, from the quarantine order form. Automatic quarantine of an item occurs when the item's inventory module group and uh, dimension group are set up correctly, as I shown. In example, uh, in exercise 8.1 and um, second option, if a standard warehouse has a quarantine warehouse attached. Next, um, automatic quarantine order are created to the quarantine order form of packing slip update on registration and via allocation journal. The automatically, uh, automatically generated quarantine order puts the item in the quarantine inventory and is processed through the order status, the same as a manual quarantine order. This means that the order is reported as finished and ended before the item is physically available in the standard inventory. Note that unlike the manual quarantine order, the automatic quarantine order has the status started when first created. So now talk um, more about Stages about parking slip of seat, registration, and the allocation journal. Uh, if an item is set up for automatic quarantine, the quarantine order is created on, uh, as I mentioned earlier, on parking slip of seat. The item is placed in a quarantine warehouse. Then the purchased parking slip of seat. 
of its option, there is no registration requirement. So uh, you don't need to have in one module the registration requirement. Uh, next, uh, on registration, the item is placed in a content warehouse, then, reg uh, then registered in purchasing. Uh, for this option, the registration requirement must be established in the inventory module group. So you need to have active option in the inventory module group, active option, registration requirements. Uh, by using location journal. The item is registered as a standard or default warehouse with the help of the location journal. Then um, the journal is posted and pilot transport is generated to move the item from the regular warehouse to the quarantine warehouse. Uh, then the pilot transport is complete, a quarantine order is generated. The pilot is moved to a quarantine warehouse. So notice that um, when we talk about uh, location channel, uh, we need to have uh, the additional functionality of uh, warehouse management. So without warehouse management, uh, uh, automatic current, uh, quarantine orders um, are created uh, to the quarantine orders on the uh, on the parking suit update and on registration. And during the quarantine order processing, the quarantine items can be split, returned, or scrapped depending on the item condition. These options are available in situations of the current order or part of an order is not ready to be put into a standard warehouse or up to a required standard. So sometimes we need to split uh, our items in current form and uh, split the current order in cases where, for example, a part of the order must be scrapped and the other parts went to the standard warehouse. Uh, we can return the first quarantine items to the vendor, so in this way um, we need the possibility to return. Scrap, uh, we can scrap. Sometimes uh, we need to scrap items that are not fit to enter the standard warehouse or return to vendor. Uh, let me show the exercise 8.2. I go back to my Dynamics AX. Now I'm I'm going to show how can I split my quantity in quantum order. I, se I select my item. If I move to quantum order, then I click button function and you see you have a possibility to split and scrap. So now I'm going to split. I have a remaining quantity too. And I, uh, I enter quantity for splitting in field split quantity and click button OK. Now I click cancel. Go back to I go back to my presentation file. Now talk about inventory transaction of current items. 
except for the status reported as finished, inventory transactions are created in Microsoft Dynamics AX4 for quarantine items. Uh, to view this inventory transaction, open the item form, select the item, and then click the transaction button. Uh, this transaction are for the item number and not a specific sales or purchase order. To view quarantine transaction on a sales or purchase order, open either on this form and select the order for which you want to see the transaction and click the inventory button and select transaction. So uh, you can you can see uh, in picture which transaction system creates. Remember that all the state that's reported is finished it does not create any transaction in the inventory transaction form. So um, if there is a state that's created, you remember that then we can add manual records uh, to the current in order form and this record gains a status created. So uh, if a new transaction is created in the regular or default warehouse uh, with a status on order, in order, um, in order transaction issued status will be on order. On order. If a receipt transaction is created in the quarantine warehouse with the status of ordered, uh, the inventory transaction receipt status will be ordered. Now talk about started. If you remember, um, then you automatically create a record in quarantine order with packing slip of or registration or location channel with a record gain the status started. So uh, the amount of status in the regular warehouse is changed to solve uh, issue transaction and you also receive a financial date of this transaction. Uh, so the inventory transaction is the issue status will be solved. Uh, next, registered transaction with the status order is, uh, orders is changed to status purchase, and you also receive a financial date for this transaction. And uh, inventory transaction uh, receipt status will be purchased. Then, an issue transaction is created in the current in the warehouse with the status of received physical. Inventory transaction issued status will be reserved physical. And um, next situation, a receipt transaction is created in the regular default warehouse with the status ordered. The inventory transaction receipt status will be ordered. And you see um, the status and we manually change status from report as finish or started to end. And system for us generates ordered and reserved physical transactions for issue status reserved physical and for receipt status ordered. So let me show those transactions in my dynamics AX4. I go back to my system. I have quarantine order form. And here you see some status. So I have started status. I open inventory transactions. So this is my order. I have no physical and financial date. Um, I, my reference is current and order. And this is reference number. You see more, more transactions for the same uh, current and order. So it means that um, 
a lot of transactions, a lot of statuses uh, are updated for this currency order. Let me show creative inventory transaction. You see no physical, no financial, no financial date. Reference currency order, receipt status ordered, and 25. Now I I will update status from reported finished to end. For example, then quantity. Clicking buttons OK. When you update it, um, status to end, system will remove uh, this quantity from uh, quarantine order. And now system updates physical and financial date and issue status sold. I go back to my presentation file. We just now covered it, uh, quarantine warehouse setup, quarantine parameters, quarantine order status, quarantine processing manual and automatic, quarantine order processing option, quarantine order transaction. Chapter 9 reporting and statistics, inventory reporting and statistics. We have those objectives explain how the ABC inventory classification system is used in Microsoft Dynamics AX4, set up manual ABC classification for a single item, set up automatic ABC classification for all items, use Microsoft Dynamics AX4 reports to assist in forecasting sales and purchase expectations. I'll show the next slide. When controlling inventory, four questions must be answered. What is the importance of inventory items? How are they to be controlled? How much should be ordered at one time? When should an order be placed? Now I'll talk about Toyota Law. Um, most companies carry a lot of items in stock to have better control at a reasonable cost. It helps to classify the items according to their importance. Um, the ABC inventory classification system determines the importance of items and the form allows for different levels of control based on the related importance of the items. Uh, the ABC principle is based on the observation that a small number of items often uh, dominate the results achieved in any situation. This observation is known as uh, Pirata Law. When it is applied to inventory, it is usually found that the relationship between the percentage of items and the percentage of annual revenue follows a pattern in which uh, about 20% of the items account for about 80% of the revenue. About 30% uh, of the items account for about 15% of the revenue. 
and about 50% of the items account for about 5% of the revenue. Uh, but notice that um, these, per uh, these percentages are approximate and should not be taken as absolute. For various purposes, I use various percentage and group items in uh, various different groups. It is not necessary to use those percentage as example. Using the uh, ABC approach, there are two general uh, general rules uh, to follow. Have loss of low value items, so it means um, items which belong to group C represent about 50% uh, of the items, but account uh, for only about 5% of the total inventory value. Carrying extra stock of um, C items adds a little to the total value of the inventory. C items are really only important if there is a shortage of one of them. Uh, one of them. Then they become very important and there should always be supply on hand. For example, a company orders a full year supply at the time and carries plenty of people to stop. And when it is only once a year, then it is even possible to be out of stock. Uh, but notice that items which belong to uh, group C and earns um, uh, the smallest uh, part of the revenue it usually cover a big place in the warehouse and this place costs additional carrying costs. So you need um, when, you, when you investigate uh, the item in group C with uh, the less with the smallest revenue amount, uh, with the biggest carrying cost, and uh, with the biggest value. You need to think uh, what to do with this item because from the point of financial management, this item is uh, called a called short-term uh, asset, and that kind of asset is unnecessary for companies. And that kind item are like, uh, are like uh, breaks uh, for sales, uh, manage, sales process management and for financial management as well. Okay, so second rule, use the money and control a hot safe to reduce the inventory of high value items. Um, Items which belong to Group A represent about 20% of the items in stock and account for about 80% of the value. They are very important and deserve the tightest control and the most frequent, uh, frequent review. In the ABC approach, A items take on, on a high priority level of control. These items uh, will be tightly controlled, including the focus on keeping accurate records, a regular and frequent review by management, a frequent review of the uh, demand forecast, and close follow-up and uh, expediting to reduce lead time. The items take on a medium priority level of control. These items have a typical control with good records, a regular attention, and typical processing. The items take the lowest priority level of control. These items use the simplest possible control. Make sure that uh, there are many of these on hand and keep simple on for no records. All the large quantities of the items and carry the safest in stock. Okay, now let me show the next slide. So we have uh, two possibilities um, 
how to set up a basic classification. We can set up manual and automatic. And we set up the same values, the same uh, options, value, margin, revenue, and carrying cost. Uh, now talk about value. So specify the item ABC code for inventory value. Inventory value refers to the worth of the items in inventory. For example, if A is specified in this field, if item A, the selected item is uh, categorized as an A item that makes up 20% of the total inventory and accounts for 80% of the total value of inventory. Margin, specify the item's ABC code for marginal income. For example, if A is specified in this field, the selected item is categorized as an A item that makes up 20% of the total inventory and accounts for 80% of the total marginal income. Revenue. Specify uh, the ABC code for sales. For example, if A is specified in this field, the selected item is categorized as, as an A item that makes up 20% of the total inventory and accounts for 8% of the company's total revenue. Carrying and carrying costs. Um, we can specify the item's ABC code for attachment to inventory. Inventory attachment refers to how long an item remains in inventory. For example, if A is specified in this field, the item selected is categorized as an A item that makes up 20% of the total inventory and is in inventory for two weeks. That means that A items are an extent in inventory for two weeks. The industry classification job in Microsoft Dynamics 64 classifies all item numbers according to the following parameters. A range of items, an item number, on an item group. The item period, the internal, the internal interest, ABC uh, percentages, highest, middle, and lowest, ABC model. When running an automatic setup of ABC classification, all item numbers are categorized according to the selected ABC classification and based on the ABC model. This job causes automatic setup of ABC classification and is often used in organizations that have large inventories. Uh, for an organization such as this, which have large inventories, it is not always practical to manually assign the classification. Uh, now let me show let me show automatic and uh, manual ABC classification setup. I open my Dynamics AX form. I close my uh, all unnecessary forms. Open inventory management module. So uh, if you want uh, to set up manually, open the form item, select item record on the tab other. Uh, you see form options, value, margin, revenue, current cost. So if you know, if you know that uh, this item, this item belongs to, uh, if you know uh, the form reviewing the report of ABC classification, if you know that this item belongs to group C, it means that this item earns, earns uh, the lowest revenue uh, amount in uh, total revenue amount. You can assign this group, but you know it's very difficult to know uh, before reviewing all information to which group 
a particular item belongs from the point of value of margin, revenue, and carrying costs. So, uh, basically, items, uh, basically, companies uh, use periodic job for uh, group updating an item because uh, sometimes item can belong to one group, sometimes to another, sometimes in one um, period, in one period, date period, item can earn the lowest revenue in the total revenue amount. Next period, item can earn uh, middle or maybe highest, highest amount in the total revenue. And the same, uh, the same about carrying costs and uh, value and margin. So let me show the periodic job. I close this window. In the inventory management model, and the folder periodic, open the form ABC classification. So now system for you will calculate and uh, will split items into group A and B C. I define my period from 2 internal interest which is for carrying costs So now I'm going to define for group A 20%, for group B 60, and for lowest 20. And now I'm going to split my uh, items based on a revenue option and click button OK. I open again my form items and system for me updated my group. So I see the same item, same group. Same. Same. Okay, I close the form. I can review items put it in groups and I can calculate items put it in groups uh, in the report and the folder report. Open the folder analysis and the report in the classification. Now I'm going to show the exercise 9. Uh, let's do a second. Give me a second. I will find the exercise 9.2 and 9.3. I define my interval. I define my highest, highest percent, middle and lowest. Now I'm going to review my item policies from the point of revenue. Okay. So now I see in the header of a report I see my my percent and I see that in this uh, period three items earned eighty percent of a revenue for my company. 80% of total revenue. 
वन आइटम वन आइटम एंड ऑन द टेन परसेंट ऑफ टोटल रेवेन्यू एंड यू सी आइटम व्हिच डिड नॉट एन एन रेवेन्यू now i'm going to compare revenue and value groups i open again the same report and change option revenue to option value okay you can see that um you can see uh, that uh, i have some items which i delivered which belong to 80% of all delivered items and to see quantity so i compare to uh, two reports and i find that uh, for example this item belongs to group a and for me of the highest um the highest amount and the same item this is the same item i delivered it 20 uh about uh, 30000 quantity and the same item belongs to group a it means that uh this item belongs uh, to group this uh, this which which is delivered for me 80% of total delivering items i'm going to find the customer to which i delivered uh the quantity so i open my uh a contract table module now i'm going to review customer analysis and the folder report open folder statistics and folder customer so uh here you can see a report in which you can review your customer statistics now i i open my I can customize statistics. I define the same interval and click button OK. So uh here see the same item customer customer code name So here see quantity revenue margin I can analyze this customer this customer in case I see in lots of places customer in my report i can analyze in uh report 100 it means of the highest the lowest customer So um, here you see uh, the highest customer is not the same. This is different, and this uh, customer earns for me revenue. You see amount, you see margin, sales quantity, and percent. This is structure. In the percent column, you see structure. 
and you see that uh, this customer earned for me 23% of uh, revenue and margin. Customer turn over. I can review by invoice account or by order account. So you can see total of miscellaneous charge, amount excluding miscellaneous charges, and amount including miscellaneous charges. Uh, forecasting is the prelude to planning. Before making a plan, an estimate must be uh, made on what condition will exist over some future period. Most companies cannot wait until orders are actually received before they start to plan what to buy and produce. So let me show as additional for this analysis for uh, forecasting reports. Um, As soon as the forecast model has been set up, there are three reports that can be used in forecast analysis. Forecast per item, forecast current, and forecast forecast. So we can um, compare with those reports, forecast reports as well, in the inventory management. Under folder report, open the folder forecast, and you see purchase forecast and sales forecast. So let me show sales forecast per item. So you can compare this report with our customer statistic report this ABC classification and as a result you can make a decision, you can make a suggestion to your sales manager or you, you can impact your uh, custom relation uh, process. So I go back to my presentation file. I, uh, I have shown a forecast per item report, and in this picture you see uh, three forecast analysis report, forecast per item, forecast current, and forecast forecast. Reporting and statistic sales and purchase order analysis. Uh, sales and purchase order analysis are used when determining invent inventory levels for a new item. By these reports, similar items or customer size, forecasters can make informed decisions about the sales uh, potential of a new item, and those create a more accurate forecast. So you can see a list uh, of analysis reports for sales order analysis and purchase order analysis as well. So we, we review uh, we review the top one hundred customer turnover, I talk customer statistics and we can review a rest of the
reports and compare data between them and after that you can make decisions in your company management. Our reported as statistical review. We covered ABC inventory classification, uh, we covered pirate alone, ABC rules, ABC models, ABC classification jobs, inventory forecasting reports, sales order analysis reports, purchase order analysis reports. A summary day of the ring. We covered chapter 7 over under delivery and miscellaneous charges. We covered chapter 8, quarantine management uh, and in inventory reporting and statistics. I expect you to do your exercise, read your manual regarding uh, those chapters. Here is the uh, success of agenda. Next time we will cover chapter 1, item registration. It will be in trade and logistics 2. Um, we will cover chapter 2, preservation and marking, which will be logistic, uh, trade and logistic 2 as well. And uh, we are going to cover chapter 3, ultimate returns. So I expect you to review um, exercises and manuals regarding successes agenda, because next time I'm going to show uh, exercises regarding those chapters and I'm going to introduce those tasks. So things you need to know, you need to do your exercise, you need to study it by yourself. I am waiting for questions. Um, before Friday, before tomorrow at um, 12 p.m. Notice uh, the time zone is GMT. Here you see my email. And uh, thank you for your time. Thank you uh, for your attention. Enjoy your manuals and exercise. Uh, see you next time. And have a nice time. Bye. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Adrona. If there are any questions, again, uh, you know, can email them to her. And we would like to thank you for your attention.